Have you ever wondered why some people seem to age faster than others? Well, the answer may lie in the strength of our cells. Our bodies are a collection of trillions of cells, each one wrapped in a protective cell membrane made of lipids or fats. The integrity of these cell membranes, it turns out, plays a vital role in how fast we age. Dr. Stephanie Van Watson's groundbreaking research has made a compelling case for the importance of the type of fatty acids present in these cell membranes. She discovered that a deficiency in a specific fatty acid, known as C15, could lead to weak cell membranes. And these weak cells, they age faster and become more susceptible to damage and disease. Now you might be asking, how does this cellular weakening occur? Well, when our cell membranes lack C15, they become fragile and susceptible to a process called lipid peroxidation. This process is essentially the fats in the cell membrane going bad when exposed to oxygen. The result is a weakened cell, more prone to damage and faster aging. And here's where it gets even more interesting. These weak cells are not just aging faster, they're also more susceptible to a range of health conditions we often see with aging. We're talking about diseases like type 2 diabetes and fatty liver disease, conditions that are becoming increasingly common in our society. So the question then becomes, if our cells are weak and aging faster, can we do anything about it? The answer, according to Dr. Ven Watson's research, is a resounding yes. By addressing the deficiency in C15, we can strengthen our cell membranes, slow down the aging of our cells, and potentially ward off these age-related diseases. As it turns out, the strength of our cells might hold the key to understanding why we age at different rates. And by understanding and addressing cellular fragility, we open up a new frontier in our fight against aging and disease. In 2012, a new way our cells can die was discovered, known as ferroptosis. This was a groundbreaking revelation in the world of cellular biology, marking the identification of a fourth type of cell death. But what exactly is ferroptosis, and how does it relate to the health of our cells? Ferroptosis is intimately tied to the health and integrity of our cell membranes. Remember those fatty acids we talked about earlier? When we have a deficiency in the fatty acid C15, our cell membranes become weak. This weakness sets the stage for a destructive process called lipid peroxidation. Lipid peroxidation is essentially a fancy term for when fats in our cell membranes go bad after being exposed to oxygen. And here's where iron enters the picture. As these fats deteriorate, iron starts to accumulate in the cells. This iron isn't just sitting idly by though, it's actively involved in producing harmful substances known as reactive oxygen species or ROS for short. These ROS are highly destructive. They wreak havoc within the cell, damaging it from the inside out. This cascade of damage from lipid peroxidation to the production of ROS culminates in the death of the cell through ferroptosis. What makes ferroptosis unique amongst other forms of cell death is its connection to iron and fatty acids. Unlike apoptosis or necrosis, which are triggered by different cellular stressors, ferroptosis is a process intrinsically tied to the health of our cell membranes and the balance of iron in our cells. So ferroptosis presents a new perspective on cell death, one that is closely tied to our overall health. It's a process that's influenced by the type of fats in our diet and our body's handling of iron. Understanding ferroptosis and how to prevent it could be key to protecting our cells from premature aging and disease. But the story doesn't end there. As we'll see in our next scene, the discovery of ferroptosis has significant implications for conditions such as insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome. So stay tuned as we continue to unravel this fascinating topic. Now, you may be wondering, how does all this tie in with insulin resistance and metabolic syndrome? Well, it's truly fascinating. Ferroptosis, this process of cellular death we've been discussing, first makes its impact felt in the liver. The liver is our body's primary organ for glucose regulation. When the liver cells or hepatocytes undergo ferroptosis, they become damaged and stop responding to glucose as they should. This impairment in glucose regulation is what we understand as insulin resistance. But that's not all. As ferroptosis continues its destructive path, iron deposits start to accumulate in another crucial organ the pancreas. The pancreas houses the beta cells which are responsible for producing insulin, the hormone that regulates our blood sugar levels. Iron overload in the pancreas damages these beta cells, impairing their ability to produce insulin effectively. This double whammy to the liver and pancreas sets the stage for the development of metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions that occur together, 
increasing your risk of heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. It's characterized by high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, and abnormal cholesterol or triglyceride levels. The connection between ferroptosis and conditions like diabetes and heart disease is becoming increasingly clear. When our cells cannot effectively regulate glucose due to ferroptosis, it results in insulin resistance. This insulin resistance then contributes to the development of metabolic syndrome, which is a stepping stone to some of the most prevalent and serious health conditions we see today. The role of ferroptosis in these conditions suggests that preventing this process could be a key strategy in addressing metabolic diseases. And the key to preventing ferroptosis? Well, it may lie in the fatty acid we've been discussing, C15. By ensuring our cells have sufficient C15 to maintain strong, healthy membranes, we may be able to protect them from ferroptosis and the cascade of health problems it brings. Ferroptosis, it seems, plays a pivotal role in some of the most prevalent health conditions today. Interestingly, the key to understanding this complex process came from studying dolphins. Yes, you heard it right, dolphins. Dr. Ven Watson was working with Navy dolphins when she observed an unusual liver disease that was linked to iron overload and fatty liver disease. A question formed in her mind. Could there be a connection between the dolphin's diet and these health issues? She began to analyze the diets of these marine mammals, and an intriguing pattern emerged. Dolphins with higher levels of a particular fatty acid, known as C15, were less prone to the liver disease. This was a eureka moment for Dr. Van Watson. She realized that the deficiency of C15 could be the missing link in understanding cellular fragility. This led her to identify a new nutritional deficiency syndrome, which she named Cellular Fragility Syndrome. It's marked by low levels of C15 leading to weakened cell membranes and a cascade of health problems, from insulin resistance to accelerated aging. But why dolphins? Well, dolphins and humans share the same metabolic pathways. So, the lessons learned from these sea creatures have profound implications for human health. Moreover, the study of dolphins provided an ideal research environment. The controlled diet and health monitoring of Navy dolphins allowed Dr. Ven Watson to make this groundbreaking discovery. This research shows us that sometimes the answers to our most pressing health questions can come from the most unexpected places. So, what does all this mean for us and our health? Let's delve into the implications of this research. Dr. Van Watson's study is a game-changer. It presents a new understanding of cellular fragility and insulin resistance, pointing to a deficiency in a specific fatty acid, C15, as a root cause. This deficiency weakens our cell membranes, leading them to age faster and leaving us more susceptible to diseases like diabetes and heart conditions. But here's the silver lining. The study also suggests that addressing this deficiency could help prevent and even reverse the damage caused by ferroptosis. How can we do this? Enter dietary changes and supplements. In the past, we used to get our daily dose of C15 from dairy fats. However, shifts in dietary guidelines over the years have led to a decrease in dairy fat consumption and consequently, a drop in our C15 levels. To combat this, we need to rethink our approach towards dietary fats. We're not saying to go all out on dairy. Moderation is key after all, but it does mean we may need to reevaluate the role of certain fats in our diet. Some of us might also want to consider dietary supplements. For instance, Fatty 15 is a supplement that provides a bioavailable form of C15. It could be a practical way to restore our C15 levels, especially for those who are lactose intolerant or have dietary restrictions. So, the takeaway? Dr. Van Watson's research shines a new light on the way we understand metabolic diseases and aging. It underscores the importance of paying attention to our cellular health, specifically the strength of our cell membranes. By understanding and addressing C15 deficiency, we may be able to take a big step forward in the fight against diseases like diabetes and heart disease. This research provides us with a new tool in our health arsenal, and we're excited to see how it will shape our approach to health and aging in the future. Stay tuned for more updates on this fascinating topic.